हे गाइस दिस भारत एंड वेलकम टू भारत किचन विद हाउ टू मेक परफेक्ट रेस्टोरेंट स्टाइल चिकन बिरयानी नाउ ट्रस्ट मी आई हैव वर्क रियली हार्ड ऑन दिस रेसिपी एंड यू विल अंडरस्टैंड व्हाई इन अ फ्यू मोमेंट्स ओके सो लेट्स बिगिन विद इट सो फर्स्ट लाइक ऑल माय चिकन रेसिपीज वी गोना फर्स्ट ब्राइन द चिकन दैट इज कीप इट इन अ सॉल्टी अल्कलाइन सॉल्यूशन basically to boost the moisture level and have this kind of internal chicken texture which you can see is shining and glistening with moisture so after keeping the chicken in water we're going to add some salt in the brine and at this point the restaurant guys use msg in this brine but i'm not going to use msg i'm going to create glutamate naturally and achieve that complex umami flavor all right further to this brine we're going to add some sugar some baking soda to increase the alkaline nature and to not make it over salty and after 15 minutes we're going to add some vinegar and yes if you want reasons and the measurements then you got to read my post on the website cuz you'll find all the information there all right so keep this chicken brine in the refrigerator for a minimum of 2 hours Now few things that you need to keep in mind before you buy a chicken. Yes, buy a chicken is first you need the wings and the neck part also as they contain high amount of gelatin and since gelatin has high amount of glutamate it is a natural flavor enhancer. And the second is that I'm using a mid-sized chicken which is cut into small pieces. Now there are actually many kinds or rather many sizes of chicken available in the market. but one that we want to buy is the boiler fryer for the sole reason of its bone to mass ratio so when you go to a meat vendor ask for a chicken which weighs less than 1.5 kg and more than 800 grams in the meanwhile let's prepare the other stuff that we're going to need so first we're going to make some brown onions now for the video of brown onions just click on the annotation and it will take you there and i'll post the video next week by the way further we're going to need some mint leaves and coriander leaves to provide that freshness in the biryani so i've properly washed the leaves and just added them to my blender with some water now to this we're going to add some garlic some ginger and some chilies and just grind them together and that's it your paste is ready Okay for the whole spices we're going to need some cinnamon stick or dalchini then comes some black pepper or kali mirch some kebab chini or kebab and if you don't find this then you can skip it then comes some cloves also known as long some caraway seeds or shahi jeera and finally some green cardamom or choti elaichi just closely mash it together and your whole spice mix is ready okay the last thing that you're going to need is some strained yogurt all right time to take the chicken out of the refrigerator and make sure you get rid of all the salty water now i'm going to cook my biryani in a handi in this video but you can use a pressure cooker as well okay at this point of time we're going to add our whole spices some kashmiri red chili powder also known as paprika or deghi mirch then we're going to add some white pepper powder as white pepper powder goes best with acidic stuff like lemon or curd but if you don't have white pepper powder then you can totally skip it okay further we're going to add some red chili powder some salt some turmeric or haldi powder then i'm going to add some ginger garlic paste as i'm super lazy But yes, you can blend more ginger and garlic in the blender with the coriander and the mint paste. Now let's discuss a little controversial ingredient that is raw papaya. It is one of the best tenderizer as it has papain and it also boosts the acidic flavors. But I know you're not going to buy a whole raw papaya for making a biryani once. So for your sake, even I'm not going to use it. Instead I'm going to use an alternative which is some vinegar and some lemon juice these will tenderize 
and will also boost the acidic flavors. Okay, further, I'm gonna add my strained yogurt and the crispy fried brown onions. Finally, we're gonna add some oil and mix everything together. And yes, due to vinegar, lemon juice and the curd, our marination is very acidic. You can see that it's quite below 7 on the pH scale, which is acidic. Now the last element which isn't very important but yes it does boost the flavors of biryani. So I'm just gonna take a burning coal and pour some ghee over it so that it smokes. Just cover it with the lid and let the chicken infuse in all those spicy smoky flavors for a minimum of one hour. In the meanwhile, I'm gonna take a little saffron, also known as kesar, and put it in some warm milk to refresh. Now, I prefer only using saffron and not food color, as saffron adds to the aroma of the biryani. Alright, here comes a little secret to enhance the flavors. So, we're gonna need some ghee or clarified butter, and to this, we're gonna add some biryani masala. Now I'll show you how to make biryani masala in a future video but for now you can use store bought masala as well and don't worry I'll give you all the alternatives on my website. Alright I really wanted to explain the variety of rice that you can use while making biryani but that made the video too long so for now you can use any wrong grain rice like But traditionally, only basmati is used. For now, just make sure you wash the rice properly and let it rest in ample amount of water for about 30 to 45 minutes. And after 45 minutes, first we gotta half boil our rice. So take a large pot full of water and as soon as it comes to a boil, add some salt and make sure that the water tastes like seawater. Then just add your drained rice and make sure when you add the rice you do not stir it. Okay, I did make a mistake of stirring the rice but it was only once. Basically, basmati rice is very delicate and by stirring a lot you can break the rice. Anyways, just open up that marinated chicken pot. Now with the help of a strainer, first check that the rice is half cooked that is it should not mash, it should break. Okay, slowly add your strained half cooked rice and make sure you spread it throughout the container. Then to this we're gonna add our kesar infused milk, some crispy brown onions, then comes the biryani masala and ghee which by the way is the best solvent to impart flavor to the rice and by the way it is much better than water. After this, we're gonna add some kevda water or rose water. Finally, we're gonna add some bha, which is basically the water in which our rice was boiling. Now, this is very important as it acts as a buffer and helps the biryani from burning from the bottom. Okay, at this point, we're just gonna keep a cloth to reduce condensation. And now, just cover the handi and apply your regular dough all around. Now I am using a dough which is made up of all purpose flour and water but you can use your whole wheat flour dough as well. So first we are gonna cook the biryani for about 15 to 20 minutes on a low flame and after about 10 minutes of cooking pressure will start to build up. So few things that you have to keep in mind while cooking any biryani is first as you cook the biryani, the dough outside will start to contract and get a little bit firm. And the second is that due to contraction in the dough, there can be certain spot where the steam can start to release. And if the steam will come out, you will lose a lot of pressure. And applying pressure is the key to make a good biryani. So if we check the temperature from the outside, you can see that it's more than 300 100 degrees centigrade but it's only at the bottom whereas if we look at the rice part it's about 100 degrees centigrade 
But you can imagine that if it's more than 100 degrees from the outside, how much pressure would be there inside? And yes, I am not talking about temperature here. I'm talking about pressure here. Yes, temperature and pressure have a positive correlation here. As a certain law applies, which is known as the Amundsen's law, also commonly known as the Gay-Lussac's law. Now, I won't bore you with the scientific details, but basically what it means is that as the temperature increases, the liquid starts to convert into steam. And since this is a closed environment, the molecules start to move around. And as the temperature is increasing, they start to collide with the surface, which actually increases the movement of the molecules, which basically ends up by increasing the pressure inside the utensil. And that is why make sure you don't lose steam. All right. So after 15 minutes, we're going to keep a skillet or a tawa below our biryani and again cook it at a low flame for about 15 to 20 minutes. Now make sure that you always keep a check on your biryani. So if you see steam, you can quickly cover it with a leftover dough. Otherwise, the biryani will lose a lot of pressure. See? After about 15 to 20 minutes, you'll notice that the dough would have become quite firm. So it's time to turn the flame off. And no matter how much your heart wants, do not open the handi for about 10 to 15 minutes. Finally, it's time to open the biryani. Now, as soon as you open the biryani, drive a serving spoon from the corner and make sure that there is no liquid below. And if it's dry, then your biryani has cooked perfectly. Now you can see guys that my chicken is cooked perfectly. It's coming quite easily out of the bone and there is no thread like structure. And that's how you make a perfect restaurant style Hyderabadi biryani. And as always, you'll find all the list of ingredients and their measurements on my website. And if you like this video, do give it a thumbs up. For updates and queries, you can like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, Instagram and Google+. Until then, I'll see you all next time.